Hey y'all, this is Jan from an Alaskan Crafter. How's everybody doing today? I am so sorry. Here in my land, it's not howdy, 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 let's get hat rowdy time. It is hashtag bod how to palooza a day because it's Tuesday, but I just didn't feel it this week. Um, I could have done, didn't even think about it until much later, uh, like Lala did. But, um, yeah, I, I just, it just wasn't in my feelers. And she said, whatever, in her la-la way. But, anyhow, um, she has said in the past that it's okay, you don't have to make them all. But I think back here, she says, yes, you do have to make them all. I'm kidding. So a few videos back, I asked you guys if you would like to ask me some questions and I would answer them. I'm pretty much an open book. Um, obviously there's some things I won't talk about, but nobody asked any I won't talk about questions. Um, the first question comes from Tammy B and it's how long have you lived in Alaska? Uh, sorry. Um, the end of this month, well, give it maybe uh, mid this month, we'll have been here 36 years. Uh, I know I've told this story, but we were living in Medford, Oregon. Cody was only two weeks old, and we had taken him to his two-week uh, well check visit to the pediatrician, and we got home, and my folks were visiting, and my... I believe it was my mom said, you have a message on the dining table. So he went over there and looked, and he just started jumping up and down, up and down, and then he realized, oh, I'm not the only one here, and there's three sets of eyes staring at me. So he turned beet red, promptly ran upstairs, Keep in mind, we live in we lived in a fourplex, and he started jumping up and down. Of course, we all got a giggle out of that. Um, it was very bittersweet, very very bittersweet for uh, my family, but they were very proud that he had made the list to move up here. Um. And it was great, a great relief because at the time he got uh, the call to move up here, he was working three different medic jobs. So um, if you know anything about the EMS world, you know how cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs it could be. So 36 years. Second one, what's your favorite stitch? I've thought and thought and thought and thought and thought about this. And I know this is such a random answer. Uh, it depends upon the project that I'm doing. Because um, I do like texture, but sometimes I don't like to do all the texture stitches. But if I'm just throwing something together, I, I kind of like the half double crochet because you're just getting a, a little bit more seems like the project gets done a little bit faster but I am kind of the texture girl um, so I really like the star stitch it definitely is a yarn eater but I love the star stitch pattern the other pattern is um, the Suzette stitch. I like the Catherine wheel. I have not done the Catherine wheel yet. I'm wait. I'm seriously waiting for that the right thing just to smack me in the face um, because Catherine is my mother's name and Catherine is my sister's name. So it has to be that very very special project. Uh, that one came from Kimberly. M. Number three comes from Diane E. What's your favorite thing to crochet? Again, very random <laughs> answer. 
it just depends upon the mood. I don't mind making hats. I don't mind making shawls. Um, I guess if the stitch is right, I don't mind making the blankets either. I really miss luck of the draw. And Nancy, if you're watching this, sweetie, I hope you're doing very well. We miss you like no other. Um, but, uh, you know, there's really no reason why I can't personally do a luck of a draw, luck of the draw myself. Um, just, you know, just do it as she did it, but not make it a crochet along. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at <laughs> some of the things I have here. Um, I don't mind, uh-oh, I'm being stalked. Loki just came in, I'm surprised I'm not getting the, ooh, what time is it? Oh, five minutes before dinner time. Um, favorite thing to crochet. Well, it used to be wraps and shawls. That's all I made. Now I've kind of gone into more with Lala to making the hats. Um, and blankets. Um, the blankets I've been kind of going for are things that are more, they're not hard, but they have, you know, like the cat one. It, it There's a design to it, something that's a little more eye-catching, but you can use the star stitch, the uh, Catherine Drill and the Suzette for blankets. The Suzette stitch would take a Let's see, number four from Crochet to Stay Sane. Talk about a great name. <laughs> oh, wow, that one is definitely approved. Um, what is your favorite item to crochet and favorite thing you crocheted? Um, Again, you know, the favorite at this point has been hats because I've been doing them quite a bit. Um, and um, hooker versus hooker, you know, just getting, oh, what is it going to be? Bam. I'm really enjoying this to where, you know, it's like, okay, here you go. This is what you got to do. And this is the yarn that you have to use. That's been my favorite my favorite thing that i've crocheted at this point in time is my highland coup that's absolutely and my friend quilty crochet um she wanted to know during mating season do moose come close to your animals or house um yeah, but they don't bother us. Um, they're not seen very much. They're not eating, so they're not coming in to nibble on the trees. So far, knock on wood, I have not had any of them come in and eat my garden. Um, the only time I've had one come in, and this is after mating season, um, was when everything was already picked and processed and so on. Um, moose generally, um, they kind of, not always, but they kind of go do their things out in the woods. They like their privacy, thank goodness. Um, number six. Ah. Uh, I, I, I'm going to butcher this name, so I'll just spell it. G-I-O-I-A-C-A-S-T-E-R-L-I-N-E. -E. Yeah. Um, she wanted to know what, uh, why did you and hubby decide on Alaska to live? 
Well, actually, I didn't decide. <laughs> um, at the time that we met, I was putting a lot of uh, a lot of my earned money um, into a savings account because I was going to move back to Texas. Uh, California was not going to be my forever home. Um, I had quite a bit of family in Texas that I was very close to. So yeah, that was my, um, that was going to be where I was going to live. Then I got a job at an ambulance company that my best friend told me about. And she says now, quote, I will never find somebody a job. <laughs> Anyhow, that's where I met my Arctic man, my Jeff Lope. And I believe it was after our first date. Um, it may have even been before. I don't remember. Um, he said, well, I don't plan on staying in California. So if you want to make a go at something, you have to be willing to leave California. And I was like, already there, dude. Um... I don't remember him telling me about Alaska at that point. He was just, if we're going to make a go of this, then we need to make sure that you're willing to leave California. Yes, I was willing. And we moved um, from there to Medford, Oregon. Um, as we say, long enough to get pregnant and have our son. He got the phone call, as you heard in the previous question. And here we came, and here we are. Uh, again, not even going to try. R-O-N-D, sorry, R-O-N-I-D-O-A-M-I-S-S-M-U-R-V-I-N-6141. Who taught you how to crochet and how old were you? When we moved into the child, my childhood house, I was two years old. And there were twin girls next door who were three years older than I was. They got brave enough, came, knocked on the door, and asked if the little girl could come out and play. Um, Diane and Denise. Um, Denise is the one that taught me how to crochet. And I want to say I was eight, maybe. And Diane taught me how to knit, and I was a little bit older than that. It never came to anything. The only thing I did crochet-wise is I made a chain, a really long chain. Knit, same thing. I cast on. That was it. I didn't, I don't even think I, I may have gone back once. I, I don't remember. But I'm going to say it was anywhere between 8 and 11. Um... I picked it back up again, oh, our daughter, I believe, was in junior high, and then I picked it back up again uh, after I retired, so uh, I retired in uh, 2010. Okay. <laughs> So, the last question comes from my sister, Crafty Moo. Although you have lots of yarn, is there a yarn you yearn, yearn for that you've never treated yourself to? And if so, what is it? Moo, <laughs> you're right, I have a lot of yarn. Um... <sighs> Again, this is one of those questions that I've pondered and pondered and pondered on because, uh, you know, I, I watch so many of you guys across the pond that it's like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. But I don't write them down. Um, I've always said, and it's like when Sam asked me what I wanted for my hatch day, um something from your area, you know, something that we can't get here. 
Um, I just got my first style craft from Judy at Witch Piece Craft Crochet. Um, and uh, it's very soft. But the th uh, it had... <clears throat> Oh, and a wool. Yeah, um, I can't remember the name of it. But um, I wouldn't mind trying things that, you know, that we can't get here. Um, I've seen some really pretty... Uh, oh, I know, honey. It's I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come here. You know, say hi. No? Okay. Hey, that's mine. I'll feed you when I'm done. <laughs> You're shedding. Let's go brush you. Let's go get brushed. Go on. She says, nope, don't like to get brushed. Sam is using, um, it's kind of a, I want to say muted rainbow for her fairy mosaic i don't know moo i don't know i would i like variegated i like striped i like i have enough workhorse yarn you know but i'm not i guess so big into that really exotic cashmere cuz that stuff is so expensive um but yeah, if it's something that we're not able to get here in the States, or the only way that we could get it is if we uh, purchased it across the pond or however you want to term it. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. Um, again, if you guys have any questions that you want me to answer, just put it in the comments or... Uh, email me. Um, uh, Sherry Hooks asked, she was trying to read the shirt I had on that particular video, and it says, I thought I saw a spider, but it was yarn. Now it's squished yarn. Jeff Lope bought me that because he thinks it's hysterical. I don't squish spiders. If they look kind of creepy or if they look like they might be mean, I will find something to pick them up with. And if weather permitting, I put them outside. Where do you put them if weather isn't permitting? Um, honestly, <laughs> I know this is horrible, but I kind of dig a spot in the garbage can and I put them in there. It gives them a dark spot. It's, you know, unless they have to have total dry, which doesn't work up here. Um, hopefully they stay okay in there. Sometimes I have put them right next to the house foundation, which stays eh, kind of warm. But, um, yeah, I don't squish the spiders. Not on purpose. Mosquitoes? Oh! Pfft. Flies? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. There's my questions. And I gave you my answers. I hope it answered your questions. Um, I know some of them are kind of, well, that's just kind of. So, anyhow, I'm going to get off here. Somebody is aching to get fed. And I'm aching to get her brushed because... <laughs> She's shedding really bad. So, I hope you all had a great day. I hope tomorrow is a fantastic day. Tomorrow we do have Little Man. So, I'm not sure if there will be a video. If not, I will most likely see you on Thursday. Right, everybody, take care now. Bye.